Welcome back to Black Renaissance. On the last episode of Black Renaissance, we talked to Professor John A. Powell, who heads UC's Haas Institute for a Fair and Inclusive Society. He offers a timely and interesting take on President-elect Trump's campaign and the notion of othering. Here's part two of my talk with him. Well, what Donald Trump was doing and is doing, and, and I'm afraid will continue to do, was really to try to create and, um, and shape white anxiety against the other. And the other could be the racial other. In the United States, that historically has been African Americans, but it's also the Muslim other, it's also the immigrant other, it's also, and even the disability other, which is unusual. Usually they're not othered in the same way. Um, and so when you say the African Americans, you're, he's clearly not talking to African Americans, he's talking to a certain group of whites. But he's not just reflecting the anxiety, he's shaping it. The thing is, he's actually very skillful in what he's doing. He's not talking about facts, and so people would try to correct him with given facts, and not the facts that are relevant, but he's actually speaking to the unconscious. He's speaking to the to sort of the gut. Um, in a sense, he's like a messiah, and so that's why people are drawn to him. What conclusions can we draw from what we've seen so far uh, with his appointments to his administration? Well, a couple of things. First of all, Donald Trump is 70 years old. He's not a kid. He's formed. I think we shouldn't expect a radical change. Some people are hoping against hope. Even President Obama is like, he's pragmatic. He's, you know, he's not as bad as he sounds. I think that's naive. I think that's, you know, the, when, we, when we look at Donald Trump, he's so scary. We want to believe maybe he'll step back, and maybe he will a little bit, uh, but I don't think we should count on it. And when you look at his appointments so far, they've been people who have a long pedigree of hate, uh, of misogyny, of racism, of, of trading in false facts. These are the people. So if he's trying to send a message, he's sending a message to the people who elected him. First 100 days, he's two to three million people deported. Um, you know, so um, rescinding the Affordable Care Act, which, which have never been called Obamacare. We don't call Social Security Roosevelt Security. So I don't think we should expect him to back away at all. And I think we'll, we'll likely have, unless there's some tremendous shift, a profound impact on blacks, on Latinos, on women, on the earth. Uh, and I think our job is to mediate that, to dampen that as much as we can. But more importantly, he espouse something that's fundamentally against what most decent people believe. And, uh, and I think therefore we have to think strategically without demonizing him, without demonizing his supporters of saying, this is the America we believe in. And we're going to fight for that at the state level, at the city level. Um, you know, people forget that when Dr. King was alive, the Reverend Dr. King, and the Reverend is important because he was a moral leader, not just a political leader. And he said, some laws are unjust. And this whole idea of civil disobedience is you do not follow laws that are unjust. It doesn't matter if Congress and the Senate and the President all signed up on them, segregation, lynching, whatever. You don't follow those laws. And we should have the same standard. We will not follow laws that are immoral and unethical, regardless to how they're propagated. And so we should be clear about that. And some people get confused. It's like, well, are we talking about partisan politics? I would say that to anyone, to a conservative Republican or a liberal Democrat. Uh, it's not politics. It's a deep sense of morality and values. And, and we can, once we articulate that, we should be willing to make common cause with anyone who will sign on. And you can read Professor Powell's blog on Othering in its entirety on blogs.berkeley.edu. Stick around, Black Renaissance gets some perspective on post-Castro Cuba. And we've got the Warrior's Own DJ D-Sharp in the studio, coming up after this.